So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jane Walsh. I've been an author with Bold Strokes Books for four years now, and I'm so happy to be moderating this panel for you today. Our topic for the next hour is Head Over Heels, Lovable Heroines. And one hour is clearly not long enough to talk about ladies and why we love them and what we love about them. But I am joined by a wonderful panel of authors today to get the job done. So I have with me today, uh, Carson Tate, Nance Sparks, Dina Blake, Christina Rivers, and Angie Williams. Hi folks. Hello, Jane. And just before I give everyone a proper introduction, I want to go over a few things with uh, you, the audience. So if you're new to Zoom, feel free to set your settings to gallery view. And that means that you can see everybody on screen um, all together. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you will see a chat box where you can leave comments. You can talk to each other, and that's visible to everybody in the audience. Um, there's also a Q&A box, which is a separate thing. That's for us, the panelists. So if you have a question for any of us during the session, feel free to pop it in there in the Q&A box. At the end, I'll try to um, have a few minutes to review and see if there's anything in there. Um, I also want to mention that Bold Strokes is running a sale through the duration of this bookathon. So from today, right up to the end of um, next weekend, they are having a sale on ebooks published in 2023. They're 20% off. So go to the website. It's boldstrokesbooks.com. Boldstrokes the discount is already applied. There's no code. They make it super easy. So go check out the 2023 releases. So now it's on to our fine panelists. Uh, let me start with um, Carson Tate. Carson Tate is the award-winning author of over 30 novels of romance and suspense which draw heavily on her legal background. Her work includes the Luca Bennett Bounty Hunter series, the Lone, Star, the Lone Star Law series, and the Courting Danger romances. One of her favorite writerly pursuits is helping her heroines find the perfect match. The one that thinks that they are lovable, no matter what. Next up, we have Nat Sparks. Uh, she has been a lover of romance novels. Oh, sorry. She's in a, Nat Sparks is an award-winning author of lesbian romance. Nance lives in South Central Wisconsin with her spouse. Her passion for photography, homesteading, hiking, gardening, and most anything outdoors comes through in her novels. Dina Blake is the award-winning author of 13 contemporary novels. She's a romance writer, eternal optimist, would-be chef, tech nerd, and occasional auto mechanic, which sounds extremely useful to me. Her books are steamy, sometimes funny, and always full of angst. Next up, we have Christina Rivers who's been a lover of romance novels since she was too young to read them. Me too, girl. She started writing them herself, but full of lovable sapphic heroines when the COVID-19 pandemic struck and she had extra time on her hands with no daily commute or work travel. Christina is based in Chicago with her wife and their two pit bulls, but travels so frequently for work that she occasionally forgets what city she's in. An Atlas to Forever is her third novel and came out in November. Her fourth, no her fourth novel, the Heart Wants comes out in August. And last but not least is Angie Williams, winner of a third grade essay, co essay competition on fire safety, which I would love to read. I think that sounds amazing. <laughs> she grew up in the dusty desert of West Texas. Always interested in writing, as a child, she would lose interest before the end, killing the characters off in a tragic accident so she could move on to the next story. Thankfully, as an adult, she decided it was time to write things where everyone survives. So that is everybody on the panel. I'm so happy to see you guys. Some of you I've met before, some of you I've only seen online, but I'm so happy to get a chance to, over the next hour to know you guys a little bit better. So I suppose first up, now that we're on to the subject at hand, which is lovable heroines. First and foremost, like I, I guess we should define what this means to all of us. So in your opinion, what makes a character lovable? What are the lovable traits or behaviors that you love reading about? or that you love writing into your stories. Um, so I guess first, Nance, why don't you have a crack at this? What makes a character lovable? I think it's a uh, multi-dimensional characters are lovable. You know, I, I wrote down like sugar and spice and everything nice while neck deep in their flaws and all that's wrong in their world. So <laughs> I think, uh, you know, just having all of the aspects that makes a character human brings them lovable eventually in your story, even if they're not likable when you first start your book, eventually you're going to root for them. So 
That's an excellent answer. <laughs> Carson Tate, what about you? What makes a character yeah. lovable to you? Yeah, I'll I'll riff off what Nance said. Um, human, you know, somebody that you can relate to. I kind of think of it as um, somebody who has a lot of layers and the person who's going to fall in love with them is someone who takes the time to peel back those layers. Um, to me, some real lovable qualities are um, someone who's loyal, um, but I also want someone who's a little bit of a rogue, you know, and, and has um, maybe they're not everyone's cup of tea. And that's kind of the point of what we do is we're finding the person who can love them despite um, a flaw or what someone else might consider a flaw, but to you is actually something endearing. That is definitely key, I think, is that like you can be lovable to somebody. You might not be lovable to everybody, but you are lovable to somebody. And it's all about finding that somebody for you. Exactly. Dina, how about you? Like what, what makes a character lovable? So I'm gonna, what I think is important about loving a character is their vulner vulnerabilities, if I can put that word out. Um, you know, what tells you why they are who they are. Those kind of things, um, it kind of gets into their emotions and and how they turned out the way they are. And that's why you love them because of the things that may have happened to them in their past or present. So. And um, Angie, same question. What, what makes a character lovable? Uh, to me, I would say their sense of humor is, you know, very high up on the list for me. Um, you know, I, in my own life, like I like people that make me laugh. And the laugh at my, I mean, if somebody laughs at my jokes, then come on, we're best friends. But, um, <laughs> you know, like I like, I like characters like that too, because I, I think it humanizes them it makes them vulnerable. It makes them um, <clears throat> just, you know, likable. Um, and yeah. So anyways, I would say sense of humor. I love that. Humor is so important. Uh, Christina, what makes a character lovable to you? I think it has to do with, I, I wrote down beautiful flaws because no one is perfect. And so it's kind of finding a, a character, creating a character that you can give like a certain number of flaws to that just make them more interesting. And they're trying to go through stuff, right? Like whether it's, you know, being insecure or having everything except for one thing in life or whatever. Like I try to write characters that people can relate to. I try to write characters that I can relate to and maybe characters that I would want to be friends with. So those are the types of people that I try to write. And I think that they're uh, heroines that are lovable. <laughs> I think for sure they are. Relatability is definitely so important when you're getting to know somebody and getting to fall for somebody. So <clears throat> some, sometimes these things, like the things that we've all said, like vulnerability, flaws, um, sense of humor. Sometimes it's really clear to us as authors. Like we have such a good idea of how our characters are, like why we love them and why we think they really shine on the page. But it's actually a different matter entirely, getting it onto the page, getting it clear to the reader um, why they should love this character, why they should root for them. And that can be kind of uphill work sometimes for us. Sometimes it's very easy. Um, but I thought we could have a little chat about that. Like what, how does the author make it clear to the reader that the heroine is lovable and that she is someone to root for. Um, Angie, how about we start with you? Um, <clears throat> to me, that's done from the other character. So if if the other character is falling in love with, you know, when they're falling in love with each other, um, like that attraction and that um, feeling that they want to be with them, you know, hang out with them and, and be with them, um, like that's how you can convey that the that each character is lovable because you know if you do it right then your readers will fall in love with your characters and then if they're loving each other you know then there has to be some reason why they're they like each other. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> it's, gotta, it's gotta be something in there. If everyone you know, else likes them, although I have read books no. where you're like, why does this person want to be with that person? Because <laughs> they're evil. <laughs> sometimes the evil heroines have the greatest arc though oh yeah to totally that redemption though if some uh, they have redemption and then and then they're lovable <laughs> top-notch arc in my opinion love it 
Um, Dina, like, how about you? Like, what, what are, how does the author make it clear to the readers that the character is lovable? So you have to reveal the things that impact their heart. What makes them tick when it comes to, to having those feelings come out and reveal, like if you have a, a really bad, bad villain as your heroine, you have to kind of um, show the inner angst that they deal with while they're being that that villain as well. The things uh, that show you the inner turmoil, I'm going to say, that, that, that makes them want to be good, but they're really bad, that kind of thing. Um, so you have to kind of come from the inside and slowly, slowly change them. Yeah, that's definitely, it can, that can be hard, I find, as an author, to put that inner, that inner monologue kind of on the page, but also have these kind of dastardly things maybe happening that they're responsible for. Um, but it's it's right. worthwhile work, for sure. Because I think everybody knows somebody that, that they really didn't like to begin with, you know, and may have hated, and then all of a sudden, well, they're not so bad after all, and they kind of see the good qualities come out. Uh, Nats, how about you? Um, what, what, um, how does the author make it clear to the reader that the heroine is lovable or could be lovable? To piggyback on what Dina was talking about, as you peel back those layers, I like to use secondary characters to bring out those personality traits that make you root for the heroine. You know, if you um, you use secondary characters to know their demons and love them anyways, it makes you want to love them too. You know, so that's just another tool in our little toolbox is the secondary characters help help you root for that main character. And Carson, um, do you have anything to add for the like the on-page work? Yeah, I mean, just not a whole lot, but um, this is the epitome of show, don't tell. Um, yeah. You know, you need to have scenes constructed to reveal um, your characters' vulnerabilities, you know, the the things that make them um, appeal to that other character, or the things, you know, that the hard shell hides. Um, and, and, you know, I've read books before where it's like the best friends telling the other main character, oh, she's really a good person, you know, but that, that doesn't work. You've got to show it. Um, I, I, I had a three book series, um, with a bounty hunter, Luca Bennett, and and the woman that she finally falls for is a woman she knew in the first book, but um, you know, people wondered if they would ever get together. But I I gave Luca a dog in the last book, and and it finally, I think that was one of the things that could show that first character that she could commit to something <laughs> and actually care for something other than herself. You know? <laughs> so anyway, give the Give the character a dog. See how they do. Spoiler alert for, <laughs> spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't read that series. Do you? <laughs> There's a dog. No, no, no. The whole, she ends up falling in love with somebody from the first book. <laughs> well, there's two people from the first book that are in the last book. So you, oh, you there's still, still you're, you're good. <laughs> it's the journey, Angie. It's the journey. <laughs> And then uh, I guess finally from, from another dog lover, Christina, <laughs> I know that you have two dogs that you, you love. Like, have you ever put a dog in there to make the character lovable? Uh, I don't think so, actually. Um, I think that, right, it's always my, my good characters who have dogs. <laughs> they deserve them. <laughs> right? Yeah. But that's a, I really like that as a plot point going forward, like giving the dog or like some kind of an animal to the the ice queen or the ice princess um, to help soften them up. <laughs> but I think everybody's kind of like systematically like scratched off every single bullet point that I have from like secondary characters showing people in like a different light outside, like if they're kind of the ice queen at work, actually letting the other main characters see them in a setting that's not work and have them be softer with their family or softer with kids at a charity benefit at a hospital or something like that. So like, right, everything that everybody else has already said. <laughs> that's a great point though about setting. Like we definitely had feedback about secondary characters, but the setting in which you put that character, like for sure that does play a role where you can show them in different light, different character traits, depending where they are and the different people they're interacting with, of course, but like the setting itself is, is actually, can be key. 
Um, so now we have a question about the relationship. What are the joys or challenges that you've encountered in making the main characters lovable to each other? Like we've now established what a lovable character is, um, how you put the, the character, how she is lovable to the reader, but how are they lovable to each other? You know, there's definitely like ups and downs to writing in relationships. Um, Carson, how about we start with you? <laughs> this, so I have a page full of, I put notes by every question, but that one. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you busted! <laughs> so of course you called me first, so I can't <laughs> steal other people's answers. <laughs> <laughs> but we I mean, always circle back to you. <laughs> you no, know, I I mean I'll just start and then let everybody else give the real answer. Um <laughs> I I mean I think it kind of um alludes to everything we've been saying. You know, you um everybody has there's an ass for every seat, you know. <laughs> everybody has a person that's their person. And it's just um trying to to find that person yeah. and and I think it speaks to us as like people about whether or not we're willing to see past things and dig a little deeper. And I think that's something we could all do with each other and, you know, not just in the pages of our books, um, but as humanity. And I'm kind of going off topic here, but, you know, it's just one of those things and see past your first impressions, um, be open to, um, to, to seeing more, even when those first impressions are kind of off-putting or hurtful you know, just knowing that everybody has some reason for why they are the way they are. And it may not be that's the person for you, but it may be it is. And maybe you have some of the same vulnerabilities and maybe that's why you repel at first. Um, so that's kind of the challenge is, you know, letting your characters dig a little deeper while still making them likable enough for the reader to keep turning the page. There you go. That's my answer. I love that you started saying, I don't have an answer. And then at the end, you gave us a life lesson that we can all apply. <laughs> really yeah. digging into the wisdom, Carson. I love it. <laughs> yeah. um, Nance, do you have anything to add to the discussion about the, the joys or challenges of, of having the relationship develop? I think it's fun watching the characters grow and connect, you know, peeling back the curtain, letting them, letting somebody behind the walls, letting them into your heart. So it is showing that, you know, as you, as, as we have all fallen in love with people, you let them in. That's the whole point, you know? So letting your characters let someone in and letting the readers go on that journey with them and feel all those feels, that's the joy of making a lovable character is letting somebody be on that trip with your character. Cause you, you know, there's nothing like that first wonderful connection zing all the feels you know and sharing those and letting letting them inside so that's beautiful um christina do you have anything to add to the joys or the challenges of, of making the characters have a relationship together how yeah, having them be lovable <laughs> i definitely agree with everything that nan said about like the journey and i really enjoy like giving the flaws like that's kind of one of my favorite parts when i'm starting a book is figuring out the problems that everybody's going to have that then they're going to kind of grow through um on a challenge side i think it's always fun but also challenging in an enemies to lovers because you have to make people really dislike each other and then slowly right they peel back the layers as somebody was saying earlier and you get to see like the heart of the person and you have but you, in order to have a successful enemies to lovers they have to start out as enemies so it has to be bad in the beginning and i i struggle with that even though enemies to lovers is basically my favorite trope <laughs> um i actually struggle a lot more with friends to lovers i don't really know how to write friends to start with than of course <laughs> lovers but <laughs> I, I'm my the book that I'm working on now is my first enemies to lovers and I'm definitely having a hard time making them convincing enemies like I know how I'm going to get them to fall in love but the enemies part I'm like gosh they're so mean to each other I don't I don't want to make them so mean to each other <laughs> but they can't be so mean that it's like unforgivable like it has right. to be no mean, but not unforgivably mean so and that's the whole thing like even like we're talking about lovable heroines like at the beginning it's okay to not like them but you do have to have redeeming qualities they have to be someone that you do love in the end like so it's true like you can't have them be too mean there are certain unforgivable things you cannot do with your characters like like you could not uh, to me you could not redeem a character who kicked a dog or something like that's 
putting the book down. No, she's not, she's not happening for me. Right. But um, <clears throat> Dina, like what, what, going back to the topic, <laughs> what are some of the joys or challenges? So some, some of the joys them. for me as an author writing a character is is to have some of that that evolve naturally one that happens to you it's like oh wow this is just going to go ahead and and work its way through the story instead of having to force it um because a lot of times you start them out with with challenges that are going to be really difficult to overcome um you know christina was talking about enemies to lovers you know i kind of the last one I wrote, the it's it's all in the details. Their work, uh, their work, their jobs, and their their um, I'm trying to phrase this right. The times that they met, and the, the that was their blocker. The things that happened between them at certain events and things like that. Um, something that we can overcome, but they didn't like each other. So um, that's really kind of. Uh, what I think about that. And then, you know, there's always a conflict that you have to overcome, but I'm, I'm really happy when it starts to work itself out naturally and I don't have to make that happen. And Angie, how about you? What are some of the joys and challenges of having the, the characters on page be lovable for each other? Um, for me, uh, and it's my favorite thing to write is the banter between them. Um, and, and not just, funny banter but just kind of you know what I mean like any like the uh, just the communication between them and how they communicate with each other like you know I've married for well almost 19 years now and that communication aspect of a relationship is the most important um, aspect and and I think that that is kind of the most important part for a, an author to convey, you know, between these characters, um, you know, if they're not having fun together, if they're not able to like work problems out, if they're not able to, um, you know, um, communicate with each other, then um, why even be in a relationship? Cause it's not gonna last. Good point. Um, so I, we touched a bit on unlikable heroines and enemies to lovers. So I just wanted to know like, if, if any of you have written an unlikable heroine or would you like to? Um, is this something that you, you would like to do at some point in your career? Like, and do you like them or do you not like them personally? Um, Dina, like how about we start with you? Like, have you written an unlikable heroine in the past? I don't think I've written an unlikable heroine. Although I'm gonna say maybe the probability of love uh, and I, you know, don't ask me character names at this point. That's <laughs> but I, I think a lot of people said they really didn't like um one of the characters just because of of her her careless actions towards the other person. It, um some people thought it wasn't believable, but you know, people are people. So um but until just a minute ago, I didn't really think I'd written somebody like that, but that kind of fits the bill. Now I have written a a secondary character that people have absolutely disliked um, who did have some redeeming qualities in the end and friends without or friends yeah without benefits um, it was the best friend of the main character and uh, sh she was really a bad bad character and my thought on that was people hated her so I I thought I wrote her well they hated her I meant I meant them to hate her so um, but I don't think I've ever really, ever really set out to write one that way. So, is it something that you would think about doing, like, or or something that you just you're, you've no interest in? No, I would think about doing it. Um, but your feedback gets a little different when that happens, um, and then you, your redeeming qualities have to be huge to make you know that whole turnaround by the end of the book. So, yeah, it, it can definitely be daunting, but um, interesting at the same time. For sure. Um, Angie, have you ever written any unlikable heroines? No, I, I, I um, not intentionally, right? Um, <laughs> I did try on Love and Other Rare Birds. Like I tried to make them kind of not enemies, but grumpy with each other in the beginning. And then, um, you know, have that kind of thaw and then fall in love. And I think I did to a certain extent, but I really struggle with that. Like my, um, 
my editor is like, they can't just, you know, hang out with each other for, you know, a, a, a week and suddenly they're in love with each other. Like you have to. <laughs> have you met every lesbian on the planet? I mean, <laughs> I know, right? A week, like bank accounts are married. Combined. You're moving in together. Like, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I struggle with that tension between the the characters. Like, uh, you know, I tried um, and I'll probably try again. Um, but uh, yeah, that's really hard for me because I just really want everybody to love each other and have sex and be happy. Kumbaya, Angie. Kumbaya. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Nance, how about you? Have you ever written any unlikable heroines? I, I've written an unlikable secondary character and to the point that my editor made me tone her down because she was such oh. a bitch. <laughs> but I have not made a heroine and I, I think I would like to because that it what an arc. But I, you know, and I think about that and then I'm like, I struggle to make enough flaws in my in my regular characters. How could I really screw somebody up and make them really traverse that whole arc to come out the other side and have anybody root for her? So I'm on the fence. I guess it's, it comes down to I'm on the fence. <laughs> but the possibility, the possibility yeah. exists. <laughs> I, I have something to to add real quick. I'm sorry. No, absolutely. Um, but um, it just kind of reminds me of um, like, uh, the, I think the best villains um, in anything, books or movies or whatever, are the ones that are sympathetic. Yeah. Like they're villains, but then they also have, there's this aspect to, the way they think that you're like, okay, I, I understand what they're saying that it's misguided and wrong, but I understand, you know, what they're thinking. Um, and, and, you know, so there has to be some kind of arc for them where they, or they just always end up evil because they're the bad guy, but like know. the villain with the code with the like moral their code. arc could be falling off of a, a building uh, <laughs> on Christmas, but you know, <laughs> yippee ki <-yay. laughs> Um, Christina, how about you? Have you written an unlikable heroine or would you consider it? Um, I tried, but I think I had a hard time making her unlikable. <laughs> so, <laughs> and like the very first scene, I kind of show her being a bitch. Um, she's at work, she's being like really self-absorbed, kind of horrible, careless with other people's feelings. Um, and then I turn around in the very next scene and I show her like at home with her mom and her grandmother and being like super sweet and still kind of bossy and a little bit horrible but like she's thinking about how like they've sacrificed everything for her and that's why she wants them to have nice things and I feel like that kind of ruined the entire ice queen and then I thought well maybe she'll just be a nice princess um and then I don't even think she's a nice princess <laughs> <laughs> so well, it's emotion <laughs> Right. I would really like to because I like that uh, redemption arc. I think it's really powerful in books where you show somebody who has you know, some significant flaws and has a lot of growth to do just as a good person in society. Um, but to be able to show that story, I really like that process. Um, and so, yes, I do hope to do it. Um, not in the book that I'm writing right now, but maybe someday soon I'm going to write a real ice queen and I'm going to love it. <laughs> that's the spirit you're gonna love it <laughs> Carson what about you in your in your 30 book career <laughs> have any of them been unlikable heroines well I mean and I've told this story before so if you've heard it just you know do something else right now um, <laughs> but, um in my second book it should be a crime um so everybody loves parker casey who's um one of the characters in this book and um i still get fan mail about parker casey but her nemesis in this book was um a woman she used to be partnered with as a police officer and sky keaton and sky did a very very bad thing um as a cop and person and to me she was a secondary character in this book i never planned to to do anything with that but then um I really didn't prepare this. I just happen to have all my books right here. Um, I wound up, uh, wound up on my fifth book. I wrote a whole book about Sky, um, and she was the main character in this book. And it was just because something was nagging at me about her, and 
she she wound up doing a good thing in that other book um and i just wanted to tell her story um and since then i think she's been in about 10 of my books <laughs> um as a private investigator which is handy you know when you're doing legal things um and and to me to me and to many of my readers she's become a favorite character which has been fun for me because i never would have thought she was a redeemable person from the first book um and it's been kind of fun to weave her story in and out through through these books um so i, I like the challenge of that i mean she's not an ice queen or anything she's just someone who did something bad which you know means she did a, an isolated incident it spoke about her character but people's characters can change um not everyone i mean there's some people who are just genuinely damien from the omen you know <laughs> bad seeds <laughs> but but um but one one action does not necessarily define a person and i think that's kind of a fun thing to explore you are absolutely coming up with the wisdom tonight, Carson. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I'm feeling very zen. <laughs> We'd like to just have Carson uh, answer all the questions from now on, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all go. Yeah. yeah <laughs> he's going to be pearled in wisdom about life. We are all going to be better humans for Carson on this panel. <laughs> okay. I, I bet no one expected that when they clicked on the panel to register that you would be getting the life lessons from Carson Tate tonight. But here we are living it and loving it. It's the first of the year. You know, it's that time for reflection. <laughs> uh, I find this very surprising that so many of you are not into the unlikable heroines. I've written two of them and it's like one of my favorite drops to read and to write. <laughs> I think there's something so compelling about that character arc that you can really, you really root for them. But I, I have gotten <laughs> feedback from readers that they did not like those characters necessarily. Like there's, um, I had a book, my first book, the antagonist of that one became the protagonist of my third book. And there was another friend in the first book that became the heroine of the second book and people really did not take a shine to her. And it made me very nervous because, um, for those of you who, who aren't so familiar with the publishing world, like when my first book came out, I had already written my second and it was about to be published about six months later. So when I got the feedback from the first book from readers, I had already written the second book where it had a character that people, when they got the feedback from the first book, they were like, they didn't like her. And I was like, oh my God, she's the heroine of the next book. Hey. So that was very stressful for me, but people did end up rooting for her. So that was, that was good. So now that we've talked a little bit about unlikable people, like let's go back to the lovable ones, the lovable heroines. Um, among all the all the books that you've written, all the heroines that you've written, um, which one would you consider to be the most lovable or that you loved the most? Like just tell us about a character that you you love from your own writing. Um, Angie, how about we start with you? I think mine. Um would probably be I, I and I guess I'm I guess I'm more thinking of it as the character that I relate to the most um and I would say probably Bobby from my first novel because I think everybody your first novel you kind of put more of yourself into those characters than you know then once you kind of get that under your belt then you're like okay I, you know I'm going to spread out and make all these different people but Bobby like has my sense of humor and some of the clothing that Bobby wears, I happen to have. And you know, <laughs> Bobby works on a ranch. I love horses. And <laughs> um, so, yeah, like uh, I think that I relate to that character the most. And so uh, Bobby will always have a special place in my heart. That's so nice. But it's like because of her similarities to you, like also that like you love that. Like I, I think that's really love, really loving. That you yeah. put yourself out there. Um, Christina, like what, what's your most lovable character? Uh, I think that my most lovable character is um, Ellie Efron in, <clears throat> in Atlas of Forever. <laughs> I have a really hard time remembering the name of this book. I don't know why. It's my favorite book that I've written. I love the characters. I love the dog, Atlas. And for some reason, I always call it the wrong name. Anyway, <laughs> back to the question you actually asked. Uh, Ellie is 
I don't know. She is in a really successful spot in her career. It seems like she has everything going for her, but she's kind of in the middle of like a bad go of things. Um, her, she's down in her luck and love. She's like sworn off dating for the short term. Um, her best friend dies suddenly. And her best friend's last request is that she take this dog Atlas in because he's reactive and he doesn't do well in shelters. And that's how she ends up with the dog Atlas. And I think that I love the fact that she's never been a dog person. She's never had dogs ever. And she takes this dog in because it's her best friend's last wish because she has nobody else to give Atlas to. And she just can't handle the thought of her dog going to the shelter and ended up ending up being put down. So the entire story is her trying to deal with her grief over her friend and deal with Atlas. And then she happens to meet a sexy veterinarian who's, well, she's a veterinary behaviorist. Um, and things go from there. But I really love her arc because she learns as much from Atlas as she gives to Atlas. So it just, I don't know, he kind of shows her what real love is and what you have to do. You have to give your entire self and you have to accept flaws and be willing to work on yourself. And I, I don't know, I just love her. <laughs> she also has very lovely, lovely legs on the cover <laughs> of the book. <bowl>, her legs. <laughs> Um, Nads, how about you? Like, what, What's your most lovable character that you've written? I think my most lovable character is um, Sam Phillips from Starting Over. Uh, she's a widower. Her wife of 34 years dies a year before the book starts in a car accident, and she has to learn how to live again. She just, and her arc was just so inspiring. It's like she took on a life of her own and came out the other side, and it so that that's probably my favorite character out of all of them, the most lovable. So it's really someone who had rock bottom, rock that bottom, had everything to gain. rock bottom, just could not function, and came out the other side, um, all the better for everything she experienced. So that's definitely. And I love seeing very, the little things. Beautiful. Christina's like, I agreed. That's cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Carson, how about you? Like in, in your again, thirty bucks. <laughs> Which one yeah, would you choose? Or you can choose a few if you like. It's just, I mean, that's really hard, you know. Um can the, you rate them, Carson? Pardon? Rate Do I all rate them? Characters. Yeah, You'll rate all the characters. Yeah, they're on a board and <laughs> some days it's like they move up and down and you know. <laughs> she has the diagram like from L Word. Yeah, exactly. I mean, sometimes, yeah. Um, I mean the 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 choices that resonate with readers are sometimes different than the ones that resonate with me um so i definitely parker casey who i you know i wrote that character i'm proud of her um she's been in many books and she's um definitely resonates with readers addison riley i mean she's a supreme court justice what you know come on <laughs> um but um sky keaton who i mentioned before and luca bennett are two of my favorites luca's probably my favorite i have to say and um i something angie said earlier about grumpy um i was like i wrote down grumpy trope there should be a grumpy trope you know like she's kind of a gruff character and and not necessarily lovable i mean um she's not neat and clean and and um and well-defined so um there's a lot of layers to her so you really have to want to peel back the layers and um to me that made her the most fun to write and um and the most rewarding once you got to the to the good stuff that sounds amazing <laughs> so you don't you don't you don't have a a ranking that we could no. share with us real quick no <laughs> um Dina, how about you? Do, do, who's your most lovable character that you've written? So um, my most lovable is probably um, Lane from, from this one here. It's all in the details. She was a makeup artist um, who loved to be with brides on their their magical day. Um, that was just something that was special to her. And then she had to chip through um, Helen, the Ice Queen's exterior, who was the wedding planner. So that's how how they were interacting, and they did not like each other at all at first. But she was really the 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 one that that had the best personality, the sweetest personality. Let's put it that way. Now, the the one I loved to write was um, I would say Cat from A Country Girl's Heart. 
she was a really, really tough character that went through a lot of trauma early on. Um, so it was it was fun to write her arc. And DJ was not a very nice uh, uh, heroine. Um, when I started thinking about that more, yeah, DJ probably was not a nice heroine. But um, you got to to watch her journey as she as she let her guard down, um, and that was really enjoyable for me to write. She was one of my favorite characters. We have a, um, a question in the Q&A box that I think would be really interesting for people to answer. So the question is, how do you decide the flaws and traits of your characters? So how do you come to that decision? Um, Nance, do you have any, any feedback on that? I think the characters kind of evolve. I mean, when I start thinking about a book, the characters are the first ones that are like kind of chattering in the back going, I want to tell this story. And as as those characters come to life and I kind of give them identities and backgrounds and everything else, their flaws just come alive with them. So I don't ever go into a book with, I want to, I want my character to have this flaw. I have to kind of like let the character evolve and then go, Oh, you, you have a hard time opening up. And, you know, <laughs> so I think the characters just kind of evolve. I envy you that it's so easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds easier than it really is. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like the characters come fully formed or or when I think about them, they they kind of naturally evolve. But I definitely have had to sit down and go like, okay, like which which traits should I give them? I have to give them to them often. Like it, it sounds wonderful to have them just come just to you like that. Chatter. <laughs> Angie, how about you? Like, how do, how do you come to decide the flaws of the traits or is it natural for you? Um, well, the book that I'm, uh, I'm not contracted for, but I'm just kind of playing around with right now to see if I feel like maybe this would happen. Um, the, uh, is a, um, like a very famous musician. And, and so in the beginning, she kind of, collapses from exhaustion and her big flaw is that she, she can't see that like the doctors are saying this is what's happening you know um the people who love her are saying this is what's happening and she's saying oh i just need i just need to get a good night's sleep and so you know her big flaw is this kind of denial like this drive that she can't control um and um so you know, like that one is kind of driven by this flaw, but, um, but my other characters, I've never done that before. I've never like written in that way before. My other characters, it's more about the relationship. Like I know I want how I want the relationship to go. And then I kind of figure out the characters like that would go into a relationship like that, or, you know, whatever that arc is going to be. Yeah. It's a very functional way to do that, mm -hmm. to kind of figure out what, what they need to do to get you where you need to go. Right. <laughs> uh, Carson, how about, how about you? Like, how do you decide the flaws and traits of those characters? Um, I do not make a, um, actual decision. <laughs> um, I mean, it's very organic. It's like, that's a nice way of saying it's a chaotic mess. Um, when I write, um, <laughs> I like start with a, an idea of the book and then just start writing and kind of, um, I think, you know, Nance and Angie both alluded to this. It's just, it kind of comes out of the situations. Um, the, the characters never talk to me. That would be very handy, but that never happens. Um, but out of the situations that I place them in, I start to, it's, it starts to reveal like, what, what does this person, what traits does this person need to have to, navigate through this or or stumble through it um in order to make the road not you know just short but to have the valleys and peaks and valleys that it needs to have to make a good story uh, christina how about you like how, how do you come to determine the traits and the flaws of your characters uh, so I start, I think, with just like one small idea for a book, and then I kind of build everything from there. So in Atlas of Forever, I thought, what if somebody gets this dog, doesn't know what the hell they're doing, and has to go to a veterinary behaviorist? And then I start to kind of build out the characters themselves. 
And then kind of similar to Carson, but I think just saying it the opposite, I'd figure out what need what what they need to have going on in their lives that makes it much harder for them to reach their goals. So what is the worst thing that could be going on for them to like keep them from achieving these goals? So in this case, like in Nels to Forever, the other character, the veterinarian, she has a huge fear of commitment because she's lost a lot of people in her life. Like her parents both passed away. She's basically an orphan. Um, and so she really just thinks that love doesn't last and that there's nothing that's permanent in life. And so she meets this woman who's on her search for forever. Um, and that kind of causes a, quite a bit of strife <laughs> when they're trying to navigate in the early days of some kind of relationship, which is really just friends with benefits. Um, but I think, right, thinking about the flaws as a tool to keep the characters apart or to keep one of your main characters from achieving their goal in my mind is how I always come up with my flaws. Yeah. And Dina, how about you? Like, how do you come to determine the flaws and, and traits of your characters? So this is where I sometimes draw on um, people I know and my surroundings and I look at some odd beha behaviors that I would consider odd. And I think about why they're different from the way I think and the way I was raised or whatever. So I kind of look at that. Um, you know, I consider myself just normal, middle-class child, you know, and all of that uh, military family. So, but everybody didn't have that. So I kind of look at how I can make a character different from, from me in that aspect. Um, didn't always work out that way. Um, I'm trying to do a little more outlining now than, than the fanster way I've been doing things. I've been doing half and half. So this new one, I have actually picked some of those traits to make the characters um, interact, have some of the conflict that they need to have. So we'll see how that works out. But I'm still, I will probably still draw on some of my experience with people I know that are like that. Um, or you know, otherwise it's just research that I have to go and look at. Right. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a, such a great mix of replies there where, they're, you know, you, the characters can evolve organically. Like you could have, you know, really deliberate decisions in terms of like your plot and like how you want the relationship to go. And then there's behavioral anal analysis that can be done. Like it's really, it's very personal, the act of creating characters. And I find it can be different book to book sometimes, like when you're deciding on uh, what the characters have gone through, like what their backstory is, you know, the flaws and the the attributes like it's it's there it's never you're never done learning as a writer <laughs> you might think you've got the hang of it but uh you, you you really don't well and sometimes while you're writing you realize oh my god this would be a good conflict and so then you have to think okay well one of my characters kind of make this conflict happen yeah for sure in a natural way <laughs> not just like all of a sudden they're like I like to dress as a clown or, you know, <laughs> that's a deal breaker. <laughs> deal unlovable. Breaker, Very clown. Yeah. Instantly unlovable. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't belong on this panel, Angie. <laughs> what can yeah, we, I think we have time by becoming not a clown? <laughs> or do we have to grow as people to love clowns? Okay, well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> or just like to wear clown shoes, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, well, I think you're like like Zen one. <laughs> I think Carson <laughs> will have the best answer for, for what we should do as a people. <laughs> love love clowns despite the fact that they're clowns. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely took a turn where I wasn't expecting this conversation. <laughs> All I can see is Pennywise. <laughs> and my light's not on. And I'm just like, all right, stop. Don't look behind you, Nance. Don't look right. behind <laughs> All right. I, I want to squeeze in one last question, but it has to be very quick, very short. So you have very limited time for this question. But I, I just wanted to end on a high note. So what lovable women inspire you? You know, either fictional characters, real life people, just very quickly, one sentence each. Go, uh, Dina, who inspires that, you? That would be my mom, because she was always, she welcomed everybody into the house all the time. Uh, never met, never met a stranger, so, yeah. Amazing. Uh, Carson, how about you? Like, what lovable woman inspires you? 
Dolly Parton. Good one. Great answer. I don't think I need Unanimous to here. <laughs> <laughs> Nance. My grandma Sparks. Like Dina said, she just would welcome anybody in. She always had coffee, whiskey, whatever you need. She had it. So Grandma Sparks. <laughs> I need to go pay a visit to Grandma Sparks. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Christina. I would say my mom, my grandmother, and also Betty White. Oh, Betty White. Good one. That's good a good trio. One. Good one. Right. She's all, like second to Dolly Parton. Angie. Uh, I would say my grandma, William, she had zero filter and um, she was hilarious. And, um, you know, she just like, you just never knew what was going to come out of her mouth. And I just loved that. Amazing. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for joining me on this panel. I had a great time. I hope you all had a great time answering the questions, uh, listening to the answers. Um, if you liked this panel, you know, check out all of these authors. Their 2023 books are on sale right now at boldstrokesbooks.com, 20% off. Um, and if you're enjoying the bookathon, it goes, you know, a few more sessions tonight. There's more sessions tomorrow and Monday and then next oh weekend God. as well. Please, please join the panels. They're a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Funny. guys. Really enjoyed having it. you. <laughs> Got it. <laughs>